So you're pulling up to the gas station meetup where everyone has their interceptors lined up and you want to join in. But there's one problem. You don't have an interceptor yet and you're just in your starter vehicle or at least one of these vehicles. So I'm here to show you how to turn that boxy little Chevy truck into a tornado tank. But first, we're going to need to go back to the basics. It's quite obvious that the best method for making money is probing and deploying. All we need to do is maximize the efficiency of doing so. To start off, you need to ensure that you're going to get a good hit by making sure to place your instruments in the path of the tornado at a safe distance. But how do I know I'm in the path of a tornado? It's actually pretty simple. Just look at the tornado, and if you don't see it moving left or right, then congratulations, it's going towards you. If it is moving, make sure you adjust in the same direction as the tornado to get a more direct hit. But don't take too long, because you will need to leave yourself an out, or things could get messy. That doesn't mean you should get too far either, because a tornado's path can do some crazy shifts. There are two ways you could play each tornado out. Place all your probes in one spot, or periodically probe on multiple roads. Each method has its pros and cons so it's your choice of whatever you want to do. Placing all your probes in one spot is a gamble because you could miss the tornado completely or hit the jackpot, getting all of your probes at the very peak of the tornado. However, the periodic probing method gives you a way higher chance of making money on every tornado while having a slightly lower limit to the maximum amount of money you can get in every tornado. The reason for this is since you have four tries instead of just one, but not all probes can make the same amount of money as the one at the strongest point of a tornado. Now that I've given you a basic idea of how to get money, you now need to know how to make responsible decisions with it. Instead of blowing all your money on every vehicle as soon as you can afford it, save your money until you can purchase these specific vehicles to maximize your efficiency. Using your starter vehicle, you should get used to the game while you are saving up enough money to get the next vehicle, as well as some probes to go with it. The first vehicle you should buy is either the 2018 Sumo Woodlands XT or the 2006 Elysian Slick Si. Both of these vehicles have a much faster acceleration speed and top speed than the starter truck. After saving up a little more money, you have another choice to make, dirt speed or road speed. If your chasing style typically leaves you on paved roads, then you should go for the 2017 Bullhorn Prancer SXT. However, you should know that this vehicle can only hold one probe. A good alternate vehicle with two probes would be the Grizzly variant of the 2021 Combi Kuma GT line. You could also choose the base variant if you don't care about hail damage. If you spend a lot of time on dirt roads, then you should go for one of the following vehicles. The 2017 Chevlon Platoro 1500, the 2011 Velfire Prairie Grade, or the 2017 Falcon Advance Lariat, which can all carry three probes. After you make some more money with these vehicles, you have another choice. You could get the Vortex 2 probe truck variant of the 2006 Bullhorn Buffalo 1500, which can carry four probes, making it the vehicle that holds the most probes in the whole game, making you very efficient out on the field. If you don't like the idea of buying another vehicle though, you can keep your current vehicle until you get your first interceptor. When the time finally comes to get your first interceptor, you should get the Dominator 1 with a nearly instantaneous deploy time and a great price tag. It also has a few variants, but all of which are simply cosmetic and give no benefit besides some lights. After the Dominator 1, there is the Dominator 2, which has all of the same stats besides the wind resistance being increased substantially at a good price point. After that, you guessed it, the Dominator 3. All of the stats are very similar to the last Dominator, with the wind resistance being increased once again. The Dominator 3 also has 5 seats rather than 4. After the Dominator 3, you have another choice to make. You could either buy the Tornado Intercept Vehicle 2, which is the strongest vehicle in the entire game despite it having a very long deployment time, or the Doppler on Wheels 3, which is an absolute money printer. The Dow 3 is much more expensive than the TIF 2, but once you get it, every other vehicle in the game will be much easier to achieve. And it also has some perks such as being able to receive data from tornadoes from a distance rather than internally. After you make this decision, you are free to work towards any more goals such as owning every vehicle in the game or getting to $1 million for the first time. You can upgrade almost every vehicle in the entire game, whether it's through the variants or directly modifying the vehicle. On every vehicle in the dealership, you can add a mezzanine, which is very helpful to gaining money since you can now read wins from the roof of your car rather than just your probes. You should purchase and equip a mezzanine for every vehicle you own. You can also adjust the suspension on every vehicle to make it raised up or have a wider stance. Raising the vehicle helps you gain speed on dirt roads, so you should do this to a reasonable amount on every vehicle. You can also adjust the shocks, which makes your vehicle less bumpy on dirt roads, overall decreasing the amount of suspension damage your vehicle accumulates. The tires and rims are interchangeable on all of your vehicles as well, 
but this is mostly a cosmetic difference. You also need to make sure your vehicle stays in good shape, so after every chase, hit up one of the mechanic shops around the map to repair any damages to your chase vehicle. Twisted has a variety of game passes, but not all of them are a good decision to buy. When you scroll down to the bottom of the list, you will see an option to buy currency. I want you to forget about those, as if you are using this method, then it isn't worth it to purchase them. The game passes you should be interested in are the Double Money Game Pass and the Infinite Fuel Game Pass. The Double Money Game Pass is pretty self-explanatory, and the Infinite Fuel Game Pass completely cuts off the fact that you have to refuel completely sparing you from having to save for gas money, and trust me, it adds up. There are some other Game Pass such as the National Weather Service Game Pass and the EMS Game Pass, but the monetary gain is very insignificant, especially since there is almost always a storm to chase somewhere on the map. There is also the Chainsaw DLC, which gives you a small amount of money every time you cut up a tree that has fallen in the road. There are a few other factors that can affect the amount of money you are bringing in. Something that a lot of people like to use is the convoy system, which can be good at times, but more often than not there will be a member of the convoy that isn't carrying their weight and just leeching off of others. I beg you, please don't be a convoy leech. Nobody likes that type of person. Another thing that can affect the money you are making is the strength of tornadoes, so play on higher end risks, such as moderate risks and high risks. Sometimes enhanced risks can be good, but they typically just end up being a bust of a day. So instead of joining servers that look like this, join these for better results. Well, that should be everything you need to know to be on your way to a lavish lifestyle in Twisted. If this video helped you out, make sure to like the video and consider subscribing for more Twisted content. And with that being said, I'll see you guys soon. Peace.